generally a lot of people call me in um, when there's issues taking place in a particular area predominantly around issues around knife and gun crime or young people either in or vulnerable to joining gangs and I guess what I generally do is just kind of develop programs that one raises awareness two kind of gets young people to understand the impact of gangs knife crime violence and then also to build a little bit of resilience I think one thing that lacked in terms of the work around prevention around youth violence is this issue around resilience so one of the things that we incorporate into our programs is how to say no we had an open discussion about issues that have taken place in the community we know that incident happened not too far from here and people had a feeling of wanting to respond to that and again it was a difficult situation you remember how tense everyone was in the room people were feeling like they want to move down because of the situation because a friend got hurt but likewise as I said to Andre and as Andre said you lot wouldn't have come here that night, you wouldn't have come here that night if there wasn't a little bit about you that said, you know what? I want to see what my men are saying, or at least hear what people have got to say. Because again, as I said to you in the beginning, we don't force you to come here every week. We don't force you to come here every Wednesday. You can go back to business. Nobody doesn't force you to say, come here, yeah, you might grab you and say, yeah, 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 but no one force you to come here to the session. No one doesn't force you to shut your mouth for 45 minutes. Yeah, I might say it, but no one doesn't force you to do that. But you come and you listen. So likewise in that particular situation, people have listened and have heard. So if someone decides to make a choice after that, you can never sit down. If you end up in prison, or you end up in a difficult situation that we didn't have this conversation. And as I said to you before, a lot of the guys that are serving life in prison all have said, we never had man like Craig, Unge, Marisa, Nigat, other people in the ends that would even sit down and just have a conversation with man about certain things. And if you feel like you can't sit and listen for the next 35 minutes, then you just get off. It doesn't bother me. Because what I'm saying to you is important. I might not have this conversation with you again. And the next time that we have a conversation might be across the table where you can't come home. That's how real the situation is for me. Now I would rather have a conversation where people are going to listen or I can just get in my car and just drive around the corner and stand with a man that you think is bad and I'd rather have a conversation with them but I would prefer to have a conversation with you. So for the next 35 minutes, just chill. Do you think that young people on these projects or do you think young people can benefit from these projects? Yeah. Why? Just sense like basically you're trying to sense for you've seen it already, like right? you've experienced it of other people. That's interesting. Do you think people listen? Some don't say Why do you think they don't know why do you think they do? They're they just cast up. Anyone that you look up to, anyone that you look up to, where are they right now? What are they doing? Positively? Are they in school? Are they in college? Are they at university? Are they even thinking about it? Are they interested in education, opening their own business? Or are they at their mom's yard? Or are they begging for money from people? Or have they got one nice hat and one nice pair of trainers and you're thinking, yeah, the boarding could have got one chain or a watch or a car that's not theirs. But that's the reality. It's funny. But again, I'll ask the question again. How do I know most of you man in the room? And a lot of the people that a lot of people look up to don't fit into any of those categories of college, university, thinking about business, or owning their own business. Tracking, shutting, on road, moving to man, or want to move to man. And reality is, how, how often do those people last? 
not frequent, they either end up dead, they either end up locked, or they just end up in the end trying to keep up some little reputation that they've always wanted. Now, just to kind of put into context, there's been a number of shootings, a number of stabbings that have happened relatively since the summer. And I guess it's caused a lot of people in the society, caused a lot of people in the community, or in our community in particular, to be a little bit fearful. You know, because you're hearing stuff that's going on in London, you hear stuff that's going on in Manchester, but in Birmingham in specific, there's been a number of things that have been taking place. And I guess I felt that I wanted to respond. And the perfect place for me to do that is in the area where a lot of this stuff is taking place. What was your best session? Uh, just why was that one the best session? Because it showed me like news about what happened in it, about uh, stuff uh, like messing about and stop trying to think you're like a wrong man and trying to act hard because you know when it comes when you get put in prison you know you don't know what to do because as you said uh, um, what's it called? I don't remember what you said specifically but you said uh, no man said to like prison. But ultimately, think about it. Think about it, that's all I'm saying, think about it. Does those people care about your education? If they're phoning you whilst you want to learn? Like Depends on what. If you're supposed to be learning between 9 and 10, and I'm phoning you, that's got nothing to do with your learning. Yeah. Unless it's your mum or your dad that needs an emergency, that person ain't interested in your learning, no matter what you say to me. You know that we're at school, ain't the most important. Okay, that's what I just said to you. If it's your mum and your dad, or a family member, let's say, that's phoning you for something important, let's say that's different. Okay, so I can phone me to say that one of the men got touched. So but how is that important to your education at that particular point? I hear what you're saying, I hear what you're saying, but that's not important to your education at that point. Is it? Because if it's that important, I'll talk to you after. If I care about your education, that is. If I care about your education. So I'm not saying that you shouldn't know. Even if you use your best version, I'm not saying that you shouldn't know. I'm saying that there's a time and a place. My schools are always school like that though. People have phones in them. I'm not saying that they don't have phones. That's not the point I'm making. The point I'm making is I'm saying the individuals that phone your phone during a specific time when you're supposed to be learning, I'm asking you a question. You don't have to answer in front of everybody. Do you think those people care about your education? And I'm telling you, no, they don't. I think everybody would agree around this paper. No, they don't. But whether you choose to answer or not is your choice. But again, one thing that we are doing is making you aware of certain things. And again, study the people that you look up to. How far are they going in life? Are they in college? Are they in university? And if they're not in college or university and they're not about the education life, are they even trying to start a business? Do they have a business? Or are they just doing things that are negative? There are things that you need to consider? Yeah, there's probably reasons why. Of course there's reasons why. And we'll look at some of those reasons why when we do part two of this on the weekend. But from an education perspective, can you see where I'm going? In terms of the sense that it makes. What I'm talking about is short term and long term. Short term is making money here and now. It's fun, it's cool, it makes perfect sense. But long term it don't. Why? Because I said I'm going to present with men that have been doing it, that are more serious than the people that some of you guys look up to. More serious than you guys, than you guys look up to. But they all say, it's not worth it. They all say, stay in school. They all say, stop following them. So who would I believe? Someone that's serious or someone that's half funny? When we hear of these issues and the violence, there's nothing we as workers can sometimes physically do to stop them from engaging in violence. But sometimes what we can do is at least give them a little bit of advice and insight because of our life experiences, because of the work that we do inside and outside of prison or mentoring individuals that live quite chaotic lifestyles and kind of giving them a little bit of insight and empowering them to make a different choice. Always say to young people, you don't have to make the choice. You don't have to make the choice. But part and part of that work is, is developing that. Yeah. Now you're smiling, bro. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with smiling, isn't it? I'm saying I was the first one that can be editing it about the project, isn't it? I was watching what it was about. I don't really know. So you're supposed to put it in some work 
about three two states of art here and then. So then when you jumped on the project, what then? Some projects that make you feel guilty and that. Makes you feel guilty what? Because we are talking about this like being gangs and that's all bad and that moving to my post there's what I'm gonna do and then. What did you learn from this project? Like you said you felt guilty in it, so you must have been learning, you must have been feeling guilt, yeah. but you must be learning at the same time, innit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I have to explain it, like... Sure. I see, uh, obviously, I don't know what to say. Have you learned anything from the project? Yeah. What have you learned? Don't be vain and that, like, say if you do, don't have a movement, that's that, don't get gassed and post that. Oh, yeah, what's the reason? I shut my mind. You know that? Just be a bit about the money. I'm just gonna be smart. Do you think projects like this should take place across the city? And why? Yeah, because like the people that think they're bad not bad, like they're not involved so they can change in that. But a certain man that ain't too deep in a way, so they can't really help them. I understand where you guys are coming from, so I'm not I'm not saying that what you said is wrong. Because I get it. In the, in the classroom, when a man phones you, it's, it's certainly important. Of course, you're going to want to answer it. All I'm just getting you to do is think outside of the box. Because I know that's not the only time that that person probably phones you. I know that they probably phone you consistently throughout the day when you're in class. And what's the conversation? What you're on? What you're doing? What you're doing later? What time do you finish school? Link man. That's why everybody's smiling. So I'll go back to my original question. Is it? Anything that is important. So I'm not talking about that one time when you're saying someone got hurt. I'm not talking about that one time. I'm talking about every other time that you call phone calls five, six times out of the day. What are they phone calls for? Because when I get the same phone calls from some of your bedrooms that you look up to, that's what they say to me. What one? What are you on? What are you doing? Is your door cool? What time you finish work? Cool. In a bit. No one else to say. What was your message? The MMA session. The MMA session? Why did you like that session? Because I enjoyed it, but I didn't it. God, no, no, no. So, how was it before you started the project? What was your behavior like? It was good, like, listening to it. Good. And now uh, you're better now at listening. How are you born if you're not in the world? So, that's what I'm saying. Even this music that you might listen to is all an illusion. Everyone's banging. Everybody's killing and everybody's got this and everybody's got that. But where are all these people? Because when I talk to their mums, the mums say something different. The mums say they're not helping them. The mums say that they're not supporting man. None of the man in that wreck them 100% come to link them. And they're all crying saying, I need help. I need help. So man, I say, yeah, man, free my man, free my man. Why don't no one check their mum? Go link their mum and ask their mum. If you're okay, here's a tenner for gas and electricity. So it's all an illusion, and I'll pull any man up on that. Most of the music that you hear nowadays, 90% of it is foolishness. It's foolishness. Because I can't understand how you're the biggest trap lord. <laughs> Are you doing your mum's job? Yeah. What did you learn from the project? I learned like when. Um Hey, you actually have bad things now. Yeah. And when you're in a gang, and when you get stabbed, then, then, you feel like, I don't want to go back in it. To be making the wrong choices? Yeah. Yeah. What else did you learn? I learned stuff like, um, violence, and dog guys. What was your decision? Um, MMA. Why did you learn that session more? Because it was, they were teaching me how to grapple. And my man wanted a grappling match, yeah. and I grappled him. Yeah. Was it good? Yeah. Yeah. You better. Hmm? You beat him up? Yeah. Yeah. That's good. Alright, thanks. That's it. Yeah. If my man doesn't do certain things, it don't change his behaviour. It's going to end up like that man. Why? Because we can see the pattern. Because a lot of the man that we've worked with in the area for the last 10 years, have done the same thing. Some of them have done things different. So we know the pattern. 
So when you see a certain bigger person in there talking to you, you think, no, you don't know. They do know, because they have life experience. They've seen the pattern. Whether they're active or not, they've seen it. So we ask the question, who's next? And I would hate that a situation would be they end up like people that sat at these tables, just like you got. So we ask that question, who's next? When you first heard about the adrenaline project, what was the first one that came to your head? Something about what's happening um, like recently. Um, what's happening on the area. So what did you want to learn in the last six weeks? Uh, from Yeah. And what like, some of the staff are going to be like the bigger. You mean with the people that are there? Yeah. Uh, I was in before. You started the project, what was your behavior like? It was good, like this thing. Okay. And are you better than this thing? Yeah, that's good. Less cool than that. Do you think these projects should happen all around the country? Yeah. Why? Because of how people like. Mm. Go on. Yeah. How people have. Not carry these weapons. that they put in trapping or doing certain things on the road is the same energy that they put in to get their business. So why can't you? You got men in the room that have got their own business? That's a prime example. But do you want to work though? And if you gave me a job and you're in the gallery, you met at 9 o'clock, you said you struggled to get up at 12.30. So when you talk about the reasons, I hear it, but I'm saying, but in theory, if you were to get that opportunity, would you do it though? And I'm glad that you would. So man might put you to the test. So what I'm saying is I'm not saying the reasons are not there, the reasons, some of those reasons are part and part of what the system has set out for you. We know that in our communities that it's harder for people that look like us to get jobs. We know it's harder for people that look like us to get through the education system the way that everybody else gets through the education system. We know that people like us struggle to get housing different to other people in the society. We know that healthcare, the way that we dealt with in terms of the police, the way we dealt with mental health is different to the way that other people are dealt with. So I'm not saying that the reasons are not there, but the smartest man and the wisest man knows that if I understand what the system is and what the system is trying to do to me, then I will put the right things into place to safeguard myself from getting caught up in that trap. I worked with in the past that entering and out of these centres, I've seen them get shot, seen them get stabbed, seen them get incarcerated and sometimes I've had to bury some young people so part and part of my work part and part of the work that takes place with myself and many other workers in the community is trying to break that cycle trying to break that pattern no we don't know all the answers no we don't have all of the solutions and there's not one solution that can deal with the whole problem but at least there are people like myself that are willing and there's a handful of people in our community that are willing one of my frustrations about the community in which I live is that there's a lot of people talking, but there's very few people actually doing work. And there's a handful of people in our community that are doing amazing work, whether it's mentor, whether it's youth work, whether it's through business, whether it's through education, whether it's through sport. There are loads of people that are doing the work and I commend those people. So I'm not saying my way is the only way. There's many ways to engage with this issue of youth violence. And I guess my, my ultimate purpose is one to stop our young people from getting locked up, stopping our young people from ending up in mental health institutions, stopping our young people from ending up at that grave. And that's all really what, for me, what this is all about. This is what I do. It's what I live for.